Hi everyone, in today's case study we are looking at flow carbon. Now, flow carbon is trying to create a liquid and transparent market for carbon credits to on-chain tokenization. Uh, it recently raised $70 million in funding led by A16Z. At present, the carbon credit market is quite illiquid, non-transparent and has a high friction rate when it comes to engaging in, in, in carbon credit trade. So Flow Carbon seeks to solve that problem. Now in order to tokenize carbon credits on the Flow Carbon platform, one must have an existing off-chain credits registered on a trusted non-profit registry such as Vera or Gold Standard. Tokenizers must apply on the Flow Carbon website via a form in order to tokenize. Once approved, the credits are transferred to a special purpose vehicle that is almost a sort of escrow service to hold these credits when they are being uh, tokenized, which is run by a third party and locks up the credits for tokenization. This setup allows for a two-way bridge such that credits can be moved on-chain via tokenization and off-chain via burning the tokens for credit redemption. Tokenization or detokenization do not involve retiring the credit, while retiring is also uh, a key function. Uh, that Flow Carbon allows on the platform. We'll go get into the details of what is the difference between retiring and redemption in case you're not familiar with that. Now, the necessary conditions for something to count as a carbon credit is that most of these credits will be voluntary carbon markets. So these are credits that companies have voluntarily kind of chose to kind of register and, and then sell on the market. The necessary attributes for these VCMs are that they must have additionality, permanence and non-leakage. So additionality refers to the fact that, for instance, if a company wants to publish carbon credits for not building a factory on a forest where they would have initially planned to build a factory, that is an example of additionality. But if a company just you know, shows that there, that, that there is a forest where they never plan to build anything and, and try to claim credits for that land, that would not be an example of additionality. So the idea here being that additionality refers to kind of deliberate acts of either climate restoration, carbon restoration, uh, sequestering, afforestation and things like that and, and deliberate acts that have a cost. Permanence refers to the fact that once a carbon credit is registered for a particular project, that project can not eventually be kind of retired. And third, non-leakage refers to the fact that if a project seeks to sort of register carbon credits for afforestation in a particular place. They cannot simply just move their project to, to a different piece of land and uh, engage in deforestation on that piece of land while also making money off of carbon credits on their initial piece of land. Now a third party must audit the above to reduce bias as well as to ensure that the credits are of true and high quality. The credits must be registered with well-known credit registries such as Vera, Gold Standard, Climate Action Reserve, and American Carbon Registry. Now, market thickness. At the moment, there's no way to gauge the market thickness of flow carbon because it, it is in a very early stage. But it can be gauged through proxy by looking at other projects that are trying to do similar things. Klima DAO is a similar project for tokenization and capture of carbon whose ecosystem token has a market cap of $29 million. Another project that is even more similar to flow carbon, which is the Tukan protocol, has a market cap of $39 million. When it comes to safety, the smart contracts have been audited by Quantstamp. Now, the credit tokenization mechanism flow looks as such. The credit owner will register on the Flow Carbon DAP. The Flow Carbon DAP confirms the information with the, with the registry. The registry transfer the ownership to the special purpose vehicle. The Flow Carbon DAP will then issue kind of GCO2 tokens, uh, which are project specific kind of tokens that, that, that represent that underlying credit and eventually these tokens will be sent to the flow carbon distributor wallet and will then eventually be sent to the credit owner's wallet within the fee structure there are kind of two percent fees on redemption which is any time that a tokenized credit wants to be de-tokenized in that case the tokens will be burnt and the credits will be transferred from the special purpose uh, vehicle to your account in your vera or uh, gold standard registry uh, no additional fees for retiring or redeeming bundle tokens directly but additional sort of dynamic fees for redeeming a specific underlying GCO2 token. So in order to redeem GCO2 or uh, bundle tokens the user should be a permission G GCO2 holder who has passed flow carbons KYC. There are dynamic unbundling fees and dynamic bundle token swapping fees. Now what are bundle tokens exactly? Uh, we'll get into that here. So bundle tokens are uh, tokens with similar attributes. Holders of GCO2 tokens can deposit their tokens in exchange for the same number of bundle tokens 
if they meet certain attributes. Now, GCO2 tokens, as I mentioned, are specific tokens that are particular to the project and year. For instance, an Amazon rainforest restoration credit from year 20, 2016 and a Black Forest restoration credit from, say, year 2018 will re result in two GCO2 tokens or two GCO2 set of GCO2 tokens. One would be, let's say, the dollar AMR, the other one would be dollar PLF. Uh, each token represents uh, each single token represents the removal of one ton, one ton of CO2. Now, the first bundle token that will be released by Flow Carbon will be doll, uh, Dollar GNT or Goddess Nature token, uh, which is the first bundle token created by Flow Carbon. It has kind of strict acceptance criteria uh, designed to represent the highest quality of carbon credits. Only nature-based methodologies are accepted, so conservation, reforestation, and restoration. And only kind of credits that have been issued by some of the highest quality uh, registries will be accepted for the goddess nature token now the reason for bundling your tokens is to create more liquidity because there'll be gco2 tokens that are specific to various projects uh, but if they can be bundled together and, and, and a liquid market can be created using let's say the, the gnt token then that creates a, a just a higher liquid market for carbon credits now types of actions that can be done on the on the on the protocol using your tokens so one is to tokenize which is the project specific gco2 tokens then bundling which is gco2 tokens with similar attributes and standards can be bundled together unbundling which is that the bundle can be unbundled to again uh, receive access to specific gco2 token redemption which is one word to say it is to detokenize your credit uh, retirement which is when a credit is retired it cannot be put back into the market and its corresponding metric tons of carbon now can count as an offset for your factory or your project now the token bu bundling flow looks as such we covered the first part which is the creation of gco2 tokens now gco2 tokens uh, of a particular type will be bundled into the gnt token and then you can engage in various options which is a retirement of these tokens a redemption of these tokens or here it says unwrap you can also call it unbundling of these tokens. now risks that exist in flow carbon one is the quality and credibility of carbon credits is limited to registries like Vera. So if, let's say, the registries themselves are corrupted or are not as competent, that would result in bad quality carbon credits being tokenized. Possible solution is that eventually Flow Carbon just operates its own registries and maintains quality control. But that is not probably not possible at the moment. Voluntary carbon markets are difficult to monitor and audit. So whether or not the project really obeys the three key principles of additionality, non-leakage and permanence is hard to hard to determine. The first two are particularly tricky to audit, which is to say additionality and non-leakage. Now, permanence is something that can be audited from time to time, but who's to say that a project that is registering carbon credits is actually engaging in additionality and actually ensuring that they're not just transferring their carbon emissions elsewhere. Now, Tukan and Klima Dao have inadvertently created a market for bad and old, read useless, carbon credits. Now, this could be a future that flow carbon perpetuates if it does not maintain a tight grip on the type and quality of credits it's allowed, it allows on its platform. But otherwise, it's an, it's an exciting project with a huge raise from uh, A16Z uh, as well as other VCs. So it is definitely something to keep an eye out for given the climate crisis and, and how the blockchain can enable liquid carbon markets.